Good morning and welcome to virtual worship here at All Saints Episcopal Church in Wolfboro, New Hampshire. We are so thankful that you have chosen to worship with us in this way on this third Sunday of Advent. We are also delighted to welcome the Right Reverend Rob Hirschfeld, Bishop of New Hampshire, who will be the celebrant for this morning's service and speaking to us and with us. We are also happy that this morning Jack and Alice Ferguson could join us to support our singing in a safe way, as you will see. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, enjoy this wonderful Bach piece, Break Forth Into Joy, from his Christmas oratorio. Blessed are you, holy and living one. Set them free. Let us pray, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. Stir, Stir up your power, O Lord, Lord and, and with great Lord might come, come among, among us. And because, and because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let, let your bountiful grace and, and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord, to whom, whom with you and the Holy the Spirit, Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. 
He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall bind up, build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We'll read responsibly the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. In every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their, in their conceit. conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. And has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich which he has sent away empty. He has come to help to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers. Abraham, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, 
What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. They asked him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make, stray, make straight the way of the Lord. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. It's a joy and delight. I think this is the first time I've actually visited uh, one of the congregations since, I think it's September. Um, so it's just great to be in this space. And even though there are just a few of the All Saints here, um, I know there's a sense of all of the prayers, a sense of the, the presence of those who um, are visiting us through online worship, but also the prayers that have uh, soaked in the, the rafters and the wood and, the, and the, the walls and the pews of this space. I, I have a sense of the presence of all the saints, even, even in this relative absence, um, and that warms my heart. This is the third Sunday in Advent. It's a uh, it's a kind of in-between time. There's a sort of a hinge to it. It's sometimes referred to as Rose, Rose Sunday. It's a, a time of a kind of lifting of the, the sort of penitential sense of, of Advent. Um, you'll see that there's some oh, those are carnations or roses or both there. It's uh, for Rose Sunday. It's a time when we remember Mary. We just read together that magnificent, uh, just uh, that, that out outpouring of, of Mary's own surprise that she is bearing the Christ child. Um, and, and it's also the season of John the Baptist, this person who sort of uh, appears on the scene suddenly, um, urging us to get ready, to be ready, to be prepared for the coming of Jesus, uh, which is, of course, what we celebrate at Christmas. Get ready. Be prepared. Don't be caught off guard. Um, but prepare your heart so that the Christ child, the new, renewed presence of Jesus in our lives, entering the world at Christmas, may take root, may grow in our hearts and in our communities. I don't know about you, but I am perennially caught off guard. I am perennially caught uh, unprepared. Um, so I appreciate the message of Advent to, to sort of say, stop, get ready, be prepared. Um, just the other day, I was with a group of other writers, of, of poets, and we got together. We get together once a month, and we haven't been able to do it for almost a year now. But we had a kind of holiday Christmas gathering. And I don't know if you know on Zoom, there's that function, the, the chat function on Zoom. I don't know if it's live or we'll have it during coffee hour or whatever. But there was some, I was introduced to the idea of a chat bomb. <laughs> Seems a little violent. But um, 
we are asked, if the coronavirus were to end right now, today, be over, no, no sign of it, no vestige of it, you're, you're able to just resume life as you, as you would uh, before the virus, what would be the first thing you would do? And we were asked to just type in real quick. And I thought, even after all these nine months of waiting, nine months of imagining what life would be, and nine months of fighting with this disease and you know, changing my life, I was caught off guard. What would you do? What would be the first thing? What would be the first thing that comes to mind? Um, I wonder if you'd be ready. I, yeah, somebody mentioned, Holly says, hug. I would begin to hug. I would, I would uh, what would be the first thing? Hugging, going to see your children, grandchildren. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was to go to a coffee shop and actually sit down with somebody without my mask and just talk to people. And for an introvert, that's like, wow, that's, that something's changed. Something's changed. So let's take it to another level. If Jesus were to come right now, this afternoon, uh, how would you change your house? If Jesus came knocking on your door, your door, uh, or your place of work, um, what would be different? How would you, what would you do to get ready? Um, that seems a little preposterous, but that is what we believe, that God's kingdom will come uh, on earth as it is in heaven. So do we live as though we're in that kind of anticipation of the new arrival? If, if God, if the world were to end as sometimes scripture uh, speaks of it, what, what would be the judgment? What would be the evaluation of our lives as a nation, as a community? Will we have lived as the prophet Micah said? I heard Michael Curry say this on the, on the drive up here as he was being interviewed. Would we obey, would we be living consistently with the prophet Micah to love justice, um, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? Will our lives be shown to have done those things? Another time in which I was really caught off guard was once, and I'm using this as a kind of cautionary tale, so uh, once I was being interviewed for a position as a priest in another diocese, this was, this was maybe 20 years ago or more, and I was invited to go to the bishop's office in this particular diocese. And I thought I had my resume ready, I had my seminary credentials, I had all of the experiences and quote unquote accomplishments that I thought made me a, uh, at least a competitive candidate for this position that was open. I walked into the bishop's office and the first thing he asked me was, Rob, it's so good to meet you. What is the good news for you? What is the good news? How do you how do you proclaim the good news? And believe it or not, I was stumped. I wasn't ready for that question at all. St. Paul says, are you ready? Can you always be prepared to give an account for your faith? I was stumped. I didn't know what to say. I was the most marble mouthed as I've ever been. What would you answer, if you were asked right now to do the chat bomb, what is the good news for you? Somebody asked me just the other day, what is your quest and what is your favorite color? Again, I'm stumped. I'm not ready for these questions. But then I was more ready this time. My quest is to know the love of God and to know it more deeply and to make that love known. If I were to say, my quest is just to walk more humbly with Jesus. That would have sounded true and right. What would you say? What would you say? John the Baptist is asked, who are you? What do you how do you account for yourself? And he's ready to say, I'm the one who's making straight the way of God. 
make straight. I'm the one who is, who is crying out in the wilderness, make straight a path for our God. Does that sound like you? Um, Mary, we, saw, we heard that wonderful song of Mary. She's asked the same question of her cousin Elizabeth when she goes visit her. Mary asks, what is it? How is it that I get to greet the mother of my Lord? And Mary's ready with a response. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. These are all ways in which we could be prepared. These are all words that God plants in us. Words from scripture and words from our prayers. Words from our church. <clears throat> words from the community of faith. It, may be a, it might be a verse from a hymn or a song or an Advent hymn. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O God, be with us. and Ransom captive Israel. Even just driving by here this morning, coming in, God loves you. No exceptions. That's the sign on the outside of all saints. That's, that's an answer. If someone were to ask you, what is the good news? That, that, that'll count. That'll do. So may our hearts be ready. May our hearts be ready. May, may we prepare a place for God to come and reign again in our hearts, in our community, in our church, and in this world. Amen. say what we believe using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this third Sunday of Advent, we join in prayer as we await God's salvation, responding to each petition with the words, Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of prophets and preachers, strengthen the witness of bishops, priests, deacons, church musicians, and lay leaders. Protect those who are persecuted for the faith. Empower the baptized with your faithful spirit. Embed your word in our hearts. We pray for the church. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of creation, grant relief to endangered animals and plants. Protect the rainforest. Provide for those who rely on nature's rhythms for their livelihood. Train us to dwell on this earth in such a way that all people and places may thrive. We pray for the earth. Come and save us. God of all lands, plant in the leaders of every nation a love of justice and a commitment to serve the common good. Calm tensions in the Middle East and bring peace where civil conflicts rage. Equip regions to rebuild cities and villages destroyed by war. We pray for the nations. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of the sorrowing and the brokenhearted, give health to the sick, relief to medical workers, and comfort to those in distress. We beg for an end to the coronavirus and a fair distribution of vaccines. Receive our prayer for those we name now. We pray for the sick. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of each one of us, we await peace and justice, health and wholeness. Sustain us as we await your coming. Hear now the unceasing prayers of our hearts. We pray for ourselves. Mighty Savior, come and save us. God of sinners and saints, while facing sadness and death, we grieve, yet we offer you praise for all the saints, especially those who have died of COVID-19, and those whose names we call out to you now. At the end, gather us into the joy of your glory. We pray for your salvation. Mighty Mighty Savior, Savior, come come and save us. God, beyond all things, God dwelling among us now, receive these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ who came, who comes, and who is coming now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we we confess confess that we are held captive by sin. In In spite of our best best efforts, we we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. stranger. We have not not loved our neighbor. neighbor. We have have not not been nice to one 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 another. Restore us, O God. God. Wake us up up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. 
ね。People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us greet one another the signs of God's peace. Peace. A few brief announcements for this week. We give thanks for the gift of the Fergusons joining us in song today and using our, our new music booth that Jack created in the loft. It's great to see that put to use so that we can add to our music ministry in safe ways during this corona time. I also lift up the, the gifts um, of our altar guild and all those who have helped to create a beautiful space here at All Saints, even while most of us are away from this comfortable space. You will see the trees grow as they are decorated and as our crash is brought into this space in the coming days and weeks. We will gather at 10 o'clock on Zoom for a virtual coffee hour. I encourage you to join us. The login information may be found in the e-news on Friday. I also invite you to make your offerings to the Lord through the usual means that we have been using during this time, either by dropping a physical offering off to the parish office, dropping it in the mail, making arrangements for direct deposit with your bank, or going to wolfsaints.com and finding the donate button. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. Because you sent your blessed Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearance. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. 
we would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. <clears throat> then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come, come again. again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. God of promise, you prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lord. As we seek to be drawn into the real presence of Jesus in this sacrament, but not able to be together, we pray that God comes close to us in this spiritual communion as we pray this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul, since I can not receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood. Come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. And let us never be never separated from you. May, May I, I live in you, and you, and you in, in me, me, in this life, and in, in the life to come. Amen. May Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter all darkness and gloom from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Speak up.